Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Talk Tuesday About Business. It's Nancy Steidel from The Business Mission. Really delighted to be here with you all today um, on this Tuesday as we do Talk Tuesday About Business every Tuesday, 12 noon UK time in The Business Mission's Facebook page. I've got a little bit of a cold, um, a bit of a head cold, so I hope you all can hear me um, over my stuffed nose. <laughs> anyway, I'm very delighted to be here with you. I run the business mission, www.thebusinessmission.com, where I help people set up businesses and structure businesses and, you know, restructure. Sometimes they've taken the plunge into business and they haven't fully prepared correctly. So we go back and help them with that. You can find out about all my services at www.thebusinessmission.com where you'll find the whole page of what we do. So everything from business plans to trademark to legal contracts to marketing strategies and so forth. So <clears throat> today is a really interesting topic. What we're gonna talk about is how to keep healthy while running a business, okay? It's very easy to slip into running a business and working long hours and forgetting about your health, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. Number two, how can meditation help with manifesting your business to success, okay? So how can silencing your mind really get you to the top of your game with your business and why is a business plan so vital to the health of your business? Okay, again, mapping out something to understand where you're going will really keep the business healthy as well. So this is the topics we're going to talk about. It's Nancy Stadel from the Business Mission. Welcome to Talk Tuesday. So on to the first question, which is how to keep healthy while running a business. Now, I know... Running a business can be very full on, okay? It is certainly understandable if you've got other priorities as a result as well. Like maybe you've got a family, maybe you are just about to have a baby and you're doing this business. But however, <clears throat> failing to maintain a healthy lifestyle on a long-term basis can really have serious complications, okay? The risk of the burnout is pending reality if you neglect your health, okay? In fact, 78% of owners have reported experiencing the burnout. Now, to prevent these side effects of stress from delivering, to, from developing over a certain amount of time, it is very imperative that healthy habits are put in from the onset, okay? Don't wait till your business has taken off the ground to try to incorporate an effective work-life balance. Okay? You'll always find that there's an excuse available to neglect your mental health and your physical health before it's too late, all right? Statistically, years two to 10 of your business represent the highest risk of burnout, okay? This is exactly why it makes sense to enforce the following tips that I am going to explain below. <clears throat> Number one is sleep, okay? Why is sleep being addressed first? Because it is often the one thing that suffers when you are running a business or you're starting a business. You think, I need to work around the clock all the time. An alarming issue as the need for sufficient sleep at regular hours cannot be overstated. After all, sleep is one of the most important ways to stay healthy. It is a natural healer that helps you reduce stress uh, levels. It regenerates your cells while you're sleeping. It regenerates your brain cells, okay? Without sleep, you are less able to focus on any problems and solve them and make decisions which you are ill-equipped because you have no sleep, okay? If you're struggling to enjoy a really good night's sleep, there are some things that you can take to get over this challenge. The most obvious is reduce your screen time at night, okay? This means that you cut off from your computer and your mobile phones and you go to bed. 
Also avoid coffee really late in the afternoon. I know that if I drink any caffeine after three o'clock, I do not sleep and also very heavy meals, okay? What you can do is take some supplements like melatonin, which have proven to be quite helpful. You could also focus on beginning to set a time for a relaxing routine to prepare for bed. Okay, I know myself and I've done it when I started my first company is I didn't sleep because I just wanted to work all the time and by God, I just crashed. And, um, you know, even recently while I was doing my degree, I was also doing an MBA and it was full on and I did get my sleep, but, you know, I had to remember to switch off. So it's very important that you get sleep as a entrepreneur or business owner, okay? Um, maybe taking like a hot bath before you go to bed and just put some peaceful music. I put meditation music on before I go to bed, a guided meditation in order to get a really good night's sleep, okay? Number two is diet, okay? Diet is really important when you want to set up business and you're a business owner, okay? If you grab food on the go, you know, every once in a while, it's okay, but quick and easy will never define your diet. Instead of believing you're too busy to sit down to have that meal, realize that you need those meals because they are important. Remember, food is fuel, and without it, your body is liable to break down, okay? The first step is you've got to schedule in that strict lunch hour. Now, if you're working at home, and you don't have that office feeling, you have got to schedule that lunch break. I do, I schedule a lunch break every day. And you know, I sit, I read the paper, or I watch TV and I eat something, which is not probably good, because I should focus on eating. But during this time for lunch, then you need to commit to eating each day to eat away from your desk. Again, if you're working at home, it's very easy to eat at your desk, because it's convenient, but get up and go for a walk. I know on Wednesdays I'm in the law firm and I get up from the desk and I go out and I walk through the village and I go and get some lunch and I sit in the park if it's nice. Okay, so try to eat away from your desk if you are working from home or even if you're in an office setting, take some lunch and get out and go for that walk, okay? Rather than eating sugar fuel, Filled, you know, sugar-filled food, say that about 10 times, that gives you that quick rush of energy before you crash. Look for foods that will gradually release that energy, like porridge is really good in the morning, okay? That means protein, carbs, grains, and beans. Stock up on healthy snacks like nuts, like dry fruit throughout the day, okay? You've heard it before, and the truth of the fact hasn't gone anywhere that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, okay? It's simply non-negotiable. Just think of like filling up your tank with your petrol in the morning, okay? Breakfast is very, very important, okay? Even if you only had breakfast, it's the only thing you ate, that's the best meal of the day. Have your porridge and the porridge is actually a slow release. Okay, so send, set your alarm with sufficient enough time so you can eat breakfast, okay? My third point in keeping healthy while running a business is exercise, okay? Exercise has incredible benefits for both the physical and the mental health. And, you know, I'm only human. I have dropped, you know, I started doing exercise and then COVID hit and then I dropped a bit because I was very isolated, but I got back on. But now I walk the dog every day. I try to do a spin class. Okay, you need to count this as one of the most important things you can do to say stay healthy. If you look at really, really, really successful entrepreneurs, let's say Mark Zuckerberg or Richard Brunton, they are always doing activities, okay? Although you may look at your schedule and wonder, how am I going to possibly cram this all in? Remember that exercise extends beyond the gym, okay? Even a 15-minute walk on your lunch break is better than nothing, okay? If you like to swim or you enjoy playing football with your friends, prioritize this fun, okay? Make it sound like, okay, you know when you take a shower? Well, that's a priority, so make this a priority, okay? When you're tired after a long day, it's really hard to motivate yourself to move. However, 
exercise actually boosts your energy levels. You'll feel so much better afterwards. Okay, It increases creativity and concentration and you will see positive effects in the workplace. Okay, Often <clears throat> when we are in business or we're starting a business, we carry a lot of stress in our bodies without even realizing it. Okay. Enjoyable movement is a great way to release the tension and get the quality of sleep will also improve, okay? My fifth point is mental health, okay? Make sure taking care of your body is one thing. Taking care of your brain is another. However, they are totally, deeply connected. For example, exercise has preventative qualities when it comes to symptoms of depression. Similarly, stress can manifest as a muscle pain or a headache, okay? To look after your mental health, why not incorporate some mindfulness practice into your routine, okay? There are a lot of apps out there that will be able to do that. I know I meditate in the morning for 15 minutes, and then when I go to bed, I meditate. I have those days, I have those weeks, I don't feel like getting out of bed, like, you know, I'm a bit ill at the moment, I don't motivate to get, but just even those days, just take them off, because the body is saying, look, sleep, you need to recharge, and then get back into it, okay? Another way to keep a positive mindset is to connect with other people, okay? Find some networking events, go to those, go on Zoom if you can't find any, okay? Working long hours can alleviate you from your family and friends, and this will naturally have an impact on your mood, okay? So the solution is find some time to spend with them. Maybe put away your mobile phone, okay? You can spend quality time with them in nature. Even a short spell outdoors can work wonders in regards to reducing the anxiety, the stress, and any depression, okay? I know a lot of people went through COVID, and I felt it too. I felt down at times, um, and it's been hard to, you know, get out of bed. But as a business owner, you must push through. And even if you are a snail and you're not moving one day, as, as long as you're progressing, you know, maybe you're down in a day, that's okay. You deserve that. This is my next topic, which is self-care, okay? What are the things that you feel like you okay? Maybe spend time doing a hobby, okay? Maybe you like going to the spa, maybe like getting a massage, maybe like reading a book. Whatever brings joy to your life, make sure you're not consumed by your work schedule all the time. It's very important as an entrepreneur or business that you do book that appointment to feel great, okay? For example, your dentist checkup should never be delayed, Okay, sometimes you need to go to the doctor, go. On those days you feel sick, don't force yourself to work for it, okay? Because your body will suffer and your work will not be of high standard. It's better to tell the truth and reschedule a meeting than to give a horrible first impression. Being a business owner does never stop you from being a human being. Remember why you decided to start the business in the first place and design a lifestyle that serves all your interests. After all, work is an important part of life, but it's not the only part of it, okay? If you ignore your needs, whether they're mental or physical or spiritual, it's only a matter of time until those problems show up at the workplace, which means that your health should be a priority for your business, okay? So, I hope you've enjoyed those little tips about keeping healthy while running a business. It's Nancy Steidel from The Business Mission. I'm here every Tuesday, 12 noon UK time in The Business Mission's Facebook page to offer you tips and advice on business. I really, really enjoy business. It's one of my passions, helping people succeed in business. Okay, so on to our next question is how can meditation help you with manifesting your business success, okay? A lot of people think they have to work really hard to get where they need to go, but actually they just need the mindset, okay? When you run a business, your most valuable asset is your mind. Any practice which involves relaxing the mind in order to regain control of it is meditation. 
Okay. Most things in our life are completely out of our control. We are unable to control the world around us or what other people say or do. However, through meditation and the hard work of the consistency of meditation, we are able to learn how to control our own mind. A trained mind may be the best friend you have ever had, and with it, you're able to accomplish unbelievable things. Mindfulness meditation, which I do every morning and every evening, can help you improve your concentration and attention when decreased feelings of fatigue, 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 sorry, and improve your sense of well-being, your ability to become so involved by the present moment, you forget everything around you, and there's this really nice flow and peak performance, okay? It may be easy to stay positive when our careers and our businesses on the roll. However, to be able to find happiness, even through the most turbulent times, is something completely different, okay? And this is part of creating an abundance mindset. When your happiness comes from an inside and you have infinity well of positivity, which you've tapped into at any time, the way you run your business is completely different. For entrepreneurs, pro productivity is very necess is a big necessity. Whether you are an aspiring entrepreneur or a successful leader in your company, you definitely can benefit from consistent meditation. Okay, so that's why meditation is very important. If you want some meditation tips, I'm happy to send you some. You can email me at info at thebusinessmission.com and I'll get you started right away. I'll send you some links. I'll send you some information on how meditation works and how it can benefit you. Okay, so on to our last question, which is why is a business plan so vital to the health of your business? I am very, very passionate about business plans because I do see the proven, you know, the proven statistics by people who have done a business plan and that people who haven't. Now, I'm not saying that people who haven't done a business plan won't succeed in their business, but the journey for them will be a lot harder. And actually, in the long term, most of them collapse anyway. They might get off the runway but the sustainability, the feasibility of it in the long term will come crashing down. Now, what is a business plan? A business plan is a written description of your business and its future. This is all there is to it, a document which describes what you plan to do and how you plan to do it. If you jot down on a paragraph, on a blank piece of envelope, Describing your business strategy, you've already started a plan, okay? Or at least the germ of the plan. Business plans can help you perform a number of tasks for those who write and read them, okay? They're very useful for when you want to go look for investment, okay? And they are also very useful when you want to attract employees that they see some structure within your business. Now, what's included in this business plan? Well, there's a lot of things included, but I'll just tap into some, okay? A business plan conveys your business goals, the strategies you'll use to meet them, potential problems that confront your business, and ways to solve them. The organizational structure of your business, okay? The titles, the responsibilities, and the amount of capital that is required to finance your venture and you know, and keep it going until it breaks even. A good business plan follows generally accepted guidelines for both form and content, okay? There is some primary parts to a business plan. So the first one is the business concept, where you discuss the industry, your business structure, your particular products or services, and how you plan to make the business success. The second is the marketplace section, where you discuss are the potential customers, your target audience, who they are, where they are, and what they buy and so forth. And you'll also describe the competition and how you will position your business to beat it. 
Finally, there is a financial section which contains your income, the cash flow, the balance sheet, anything like break even analysis. This may be part to require you from your accountant, but you can do it yourself. I teach a business plan course, 12 weeks where we do eight weeks of theory, and then the last four weeks I teach you all about cash flow. Okay, breaking down these three major sections even further, you've got business description, marketing, and other strategies, brand strategies, PR, sales strategies, competitive analysis, operations and management, finance factor. In addition to these sections, a business plan should also have a cover, a, an index, a title page, and um, so forth. Now, how long should this business plan be? All right, so I do have the debate of this on social media. And people at times don't agree with me. That's okay. We're not here to agree or disagree. But I do think a really, really healthy business plan is 30 to 40 pages long. Okay? A useful business plan, you know, if you scratch it on an envelope, you're not going to get enough detail on that. Okay? When I say 30 to 40 and you're thinking, oh, that's a lot, it really isn't. When you discuss your target audience, that's a that's already four pages right there because you need to know their geographic, you need to know their demographic, the psychology of them, the behavior of them, their age group, what they do for a living, how old are they, what are their activities, da 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 da. Okay, then there's the marketing strategy, then there's the brand strategy, the PR strategy, sales strategy, the advertising strategy, then there's your competitors. So realistically, from the business plans that I do with clients, we hit the 40 pound, close to 40 pages with the financials as well. Okay, so you need a cash flow sheet. There's the cash flow sheet for the present day, and then there's your three year financial projection. Okay, if you have a simple concept, you may be able to express it in few words, but on the other hand, any new business really needs to get their, ex, you know, really needs to explain it to get the message across so you really really understand it. The more detail you go into a business plan, the better it is for you because you will be really prepared for the journey ahead. Okay, thank you very much for joining me today. And that last question was, you know, why is a business plan vital to the health of your business? You need to see that your business is a separate entity than you. Okay, you are not your business. Once you grasp that concept that you are not your business, you will definitely 100% have success. So here is you and here's your business. So this business needs a blueprint. You know, it's a vessel to take your idea out into the world. And that vessel needs structure in order for it to succeed through the global issues, through the tsunami, through whatever it goes through, and it needs to be really solid. If you send a raft to the ocean or you send a ship liner, well, the chances are the ship liner will last much longer than the raft because there's more structure, okay? If you do have any questions about doing a business plan, I offer a business plan course. It's 12 weeks long, one-to-one, -one. so you would sit with me through a Skype meetings. Every week we would meet up. I've got a business plan template which has successfully driven 100% success with business owners. And we will work together to achieve the right business plan for you. We talk about trademarking and legal contracts. That's another topic that I will address at some other Talk Tuesday. But those are all things that you need to set up a business correctly so that it has a fair chance at success. Good. Thank you very much for all joining me today who have ever signed on. I hope that you've uh, picked up some tips and advice. If you do feel that anyone is out there doing a business and you think that my words might help them, please do feel free to share them with other people as well. I will be here next Tuesday, Talk Tuesday about business, 12 noon UK time in the Business Missions Facebook page. Have a wonderful and productive week ahead. Take care. Bye.